الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أجمعين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد نورك الساري ومددك الجاري واجمعيني في كل أطواري وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا نور يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تمتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون الحمد لله one of the aspects of living in a certain type of society is that we start to adopt the good and many times the bad of that society. The people that you and I are around regularly are the people that we begin to imitate. They're the people whose habits, whose approaches we begin to absorb. And this is not just true for us in the time that we are living in. This has been prevalent for human beings throughout history, that the human being will adapt to the situations that they're in, the human being will adapt to the society that they're in, and many times that adaptation starts to become more than just adaptation. The human being begins to conform to whatever norms to, of the society that they're living in, to whatever norms of the place that they are living in. And so, you know, let's say that someone, uh, I'm sure all of us here, we're here in you know, Silicon Valley, back in in the days when we were going to our offices, there used to be a time, you know, you'd dress up, suit and tie, show up to work, and now, you know, we can just wear our jeans and t-shirts, and, and that's become the norm for many of us, especially if you're working at a tech company or in, like, a startup environment. But if you're working in, you know, New York or in the financial district, you're still going to have to dress up in that kind of old-school type of style. It depends on the norms of the people, the culture of, let's say, the company that you're in. You begin to conform, regardless of whatever personal, you know, uh, clothing choices that one may have had. So the more you surround yourself with certain types of people, the more that uh, conforming begins to happen. And it's not any different with haram, with things that we are not supposed to be doing in our religion. The more we see people doing them, and the more we see them being taken lightly, the more we begin to think it's really not that big of a deal. Everybody else is doing it. This is just how the society runs. And that has happened for us as a Muslim community in a lot of ways, but specifically with regards to the area of interest, with regards to the area of riba. That in the society that we live in, we live in a society that is laden with interest. That the foundations of this society are continually built on interest. Every single financial instrument that we try to engage with, interest is there. Every human being, or the majority of people in this country, are caught up in some type of debt that's only growing and growing, not because of the amount of the loan that they took out, but because of the APR or the interest associated with that loan. And one of the sad aspects of this is that as Muslims living in the United States, as Muslims living in the West, we have begun to take that idea and stop taking it as seriously as Allah took it in the Quran, or as the Prophet ﷺ warned against taking interest in the Hadith. We say, eh, it's really not that big of a deal. What could be so bad about it? Because they package it nicely. They put it in proper documents. It's not called what it is. They, they package it with APR. It's an annual percentage rate. They make it seem like it's not that big of a deal. It's a monthly payment that we just pay and we set it and forget it. But that doesn't take away the haram components of that instrument that we're engaging in. That doesn't make it any less weighty in the eyes of our religion. And so we have to examine and sometimes ask ourselves the difficult questions in our life of what are we doing that God would not appreciate? All of us, if we had, if ourselves or our family members, if we knew somebody was drinking, we would know, hey, that's not cool, right? There somebody was, you know, eating bacon, we know that that's not something that, that we should do as Muslims. If we had our children or if ourselves, if we were engaging in adultery, engaging in affairs, we would know and we would feel the effects too, the negative spiritual effects. There's an immediate effect that one feels when they sin. We would know, hey, this isn't something I can do. If someone was selling drugs and making all their money either selling drugs or using drugs, we would know that money is haram. We would know that money is not permissible. That money does not have barakah in it. And yet, for some reason, a sin that Allah outlines in the Quran as being higher than the things that I just mentioned, as being worse than adultery, as being worse than drinking, as having more of a negative effect on us than all of these other major sins that we do, we've started to take very, very lightly. And it's because it's just happening in the unseen. You can't see this stuff. You can't see 
You know, you can physically uh, count the amount of money that you pay towards something, but we can't actually see it because it's just happening in our bank account. It's just the money is just going and we're just paying these type of payments. And so let's just talk a little bit about this. This is a topic I feel that is not covered nearly as often as we need to remind ourselves of. What exactly is interest? Any type of loan that we take that demands that you pay back more than that loan amount and has an APR associated with it or has an interest percentage associated with it, that qualifies as interest. And regardless of how that's packaged, regardless of what that instrument is, if the contract stipulates that there's interest in it, there's interest in it, no matter how impressive the terms and conditions may be. Now, in this society that we live in, they make it seem like, oh, you have to do this stuff. You've got to get the million, two million, three million dollar home. You've got to get the hundred thousand dollar car. You've got to get a huge student loan in order to get to the absolute best school. Oh, you just did undergrad? You're nothing until you have a master's. You're nothing until you have a professional degree. Just keep taking out loans. Keep taking out loans and keep paying to further your quote unquote progress in the society. Meanwhile, our spiritual progress begins to deteriorate. We're not progressing spiritually, but we think we are. We're progressing materially, but in fact, we are being harmed in the areas that matter to us and that are going to matter to us in, in the end, in the next life. So let's just understand this in a little bit of detail. The dangers of interest. What are some of the dangers of interest? What are some of the warnings that Allah has given us? Allah tells us in the Quran, don't even get near this stuff. Don't even, don't even mess with, with uh, riba-laden loan. Don't, don't, don't go near it. And he says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Baqarah, that Allah deprives interest of all blessing, of all barakah, but He blesses charity. And then he relates this, he says, He loves not the ungrateful sinner. The sinner who is ungrateful to Him. And he's associating this now with taking out interest. And then he's saying that He deprives of, of all blessing. Now what does that mean? Let's examine that a little bit. Being deprived of blessing, being deprived of barakah, doesn't simply mean that we uh, uh, are going to see the effect in the next life. Allah, especially for the people who He loves, and we know this in the hadith of the Prophet Sallam told us that the Muslims are tested most in this life, He begins to show them the impacts in this life. When your life doesn't have barakah in it, more fighting is happening at home. More arguments are happening. More problems are coming up. More issues with children. More negativity. A lack of tranquility. An overall trepidation in the heart. Increasing levels of anxiety. Increasing levels of depression. Increasing levels of stress. These are just the tip of the iceberg of what happens when barakah is removed from a life. A life with barakah doesn't mean it's a life without problems. No, the Prophet ﷺ had the most amount of tribulations. The prophets are tested the most. But in that tribulation, he had a sakina to, to him. In the tribulation for the people of Allah, they are able to maintain a state of tranquility that Allah descends upon them. But for the people who don't have barakah in their life, the tribulation becomes all-consuming. And more and more tribulations start to come that remove the blessing in one's life. So we have to really just understand this concept that when we engage in certain things in this world that are not permissible, we have a direct impact. And you might not see that impact today or tomorrow. That impact, God forbid, and we hope this never comes, but according to the way Allah is described in the Quran, it can come. It comes later on in life. And then he says in the Quran, and this is a very scary verse, he says, O oh believers, have taqwa of Allah and give up what is still due to you from the interest if you are truly believers. And if you do not do so, then take notice. If you do not give up these interest practices, then take notice of war from Allah and His Messenger. Allah gives warning to the believers. Take notice of war from Allah and His Messenger. You can examine throughout the Quran. You are not going to find many verses where Allah is telling you to take notice of war. It's just not the case. Allah says He doesn't like this sin, to not do this sin. Shaitan is with you when you do certain types of sin. But show us where Allah says He and His Messenger وسلم, are giving you the warning of waging war. We have to examine that. We have to think closely. Do you and I want in our life, at some point, or in the lives of our children, war from Allah and His Messenger because of the decision that we are making? Have we ever examined our problems? Many times we get into this state where we blame everybody for our problems. Do we ever look down inside and wonder, what sins am I doing? That I might not even think are sins. That might be causing the problems that I am facing in my life. And so, you know, you read this and you think, oh, you know, this is only for the people who are like making millions and millions of dollars from interest. If I give you a $100,000 loan and I make you pay, pay me back $150,000, I'm the one being described in this verse. That's only for those people. 
right? What's the big deal if I'm, ta if I'm just taking a loan and paying somebody three, four percentage points of interest? What's the big deal? Everybody's doing it. I don't see anything happening. Well, the Prophet ﷺ warned us harshly about it in a hadith rated, uh, related in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad. Very, very sound hadith. The Prophet ﷺ says that the, the receiver and the payer of interest are cursed. The one who records it and the witnesses to the transaction, he says they are all alike in guilt. Immediately negating anybody who says that it's just the person who's actually making significant monetary benefit from the interest. He's saying the person who's paying it is also in this bucket. Describing us, because look, you can't have a system, right? If you're trying to sell me something and there's no buyers, guess what? The demand side is gone. You can't just have supply. You need supply and you need demand. Norm, common economics, right? Basic economics. So if you do not have the people who give demand and who purchase these loans, you're not going to have the people who supply these loans. So this is, we have to wonder how much am I engaging in. And then we're going to say, you know, what's the big deal? I mean, I, I've been, you know, my, maybe I've been doing this for my whole life. I'm not seeing any problems. Well, the problems might not come in this life. This is the issue. If Allah loves somebody, He might show them in this life. But He said in a hadith related on the, on the authority of Sayyidina Abu Huraira, where the Prophet said, recorded in the collection of Ibn Majah, that riba has 70 segments, the least serious of which is equivalent to a man committing adultery with his own mother. This hadith shocked me when I read it. I really did not imagine that you would have wording this strong condemning something. The least serious, interest has 70 segments. He said the least serious is equivalent to a man committing adultery with his own mother. In another hadith, he says that it's worse than committing adultery 36 times with somebody. You and I, we have family members, we, we know ourselves, we have children. If any of our children, our daughters, our sisters, ourselves, our sons, if we were like caught committing adultery, that's it. All hell would break loose. We would never accept it. Yet we're engaging in car loans, in mortgages, and all these other things that are laden with interest and we don't realize the, the significant negative impact that this could be having on us. And the, the impact, God forbid, that we're going to feel in the next life. And another hadith that the Prophet is on, he said, Allah would be justified in not allowing four people to enter paradise or to taste his blessings. The one who drinks habitually, the one who takes interest, the one who steals and usurps an orphan's property and, without right, and the one who is undutiful to their parents. Two things in this hadith we very much take lightly, at least I know I do. The interest aspect and the undutiful to a parent. We all know, you know, drinking a lot is a problem and stealing somebody's property, especially in orphans, is a problem. But how many of us are taking interest at that level? Prophet is comparing it to someone who's drinking all the time. And he's saying it's just if Allah could be justified in not allowing that person to even taste the blessings of paradise. These hadith, these are just some of them. There's a, the hadith tradition has many hadith where the Prophet talks about the Islamic economic system. And he's giving us an example of the negative impact that's going to have in the next life. The sins that you and I engage in, seen or unseen, that we know of or we don't know of, have an impact in the next life. And so let's just touch briefly on what are some of the common types of interest that, 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 that exist. First and foremost, the biggest one, the American dream, everybody wants to own a home, mortgages. Right? And the, the, it's, it's very, very common in the society we live in. And we think it's okay because we live here. Right? And so we want to get the benefits associated with owning a home, the tax benefits, equity. That all makes sense and it's all good that we want that. Right? But we have to think, what kind of society are we living in that you have people who take out multiple mortgages? We'll get one home, then we go and we take out another one eventually so we can go buy an investment property and make the rent money and then go and buy another property and then keep buying and keep buying. And we think it's all good. Meanwhile, we're taking interest in accruing sins, according to the hadith, which are significantly damaging to our hearts and to our families and removing the barakah from our society. And then we have problems at, at home and we wonder, what's going on? I don't understand why I'm always fighting at the house. Let's examine how many major sins are we committing? How many of us would be cool making, selling pounds, I mean now weed is legal here, but you know, 10 years ago it wasn't, selling pounds and pounds of marijuana, taking that drug money and using that money to, to uh, uh, make, invest in things. Nobody would be okay with that. But we think it's okay to go and take a giant loan, pay some uh, corrupt institution lots and lots of money and, and continue furthering this negative problem. We have a way out for this one. Alhamdulillah, there are literally halal mortgages that exist where proper scholars, high-level caliber scholars have, have, have reviewed it, have, have made the contracts permissible for us. And so that, that one has an easy way out. Any single one of us here, 
we're engaged in that. Today is a good time to refinance. The rates are low right now, at the lowest they've ever been. Go and refinance to a halal loan, halal mortgage. It's not a problem. But don't keep doing and engaging in the system and, and then worrying about the small sins that we commit and leaving the big ones. Prioritization is very, very important. The next type of major uh, loan that we take out, car loans. There's so many options in this society. Alhamdulillah, you have something called leasing a car. You have a 0% APR option for many cars. But we got to drive the nicest luxury Benz. You know, we got to drive the biggest car. So we go and we take out a $40,000 loan. Well, guess what? If you don't need something and you take out a loan, even if you need it, there are ways to get around it in the society that we live in. But we don't even need it. We just want to live the, the, the big baller luxury life, right? And live beyond our means. And then we're going to go and take out a loan. And how are you going to answer to God about that? Like, oh, there was this option. You could have leased this car. You could have gotten this one on 0% APR. Why did you get the one on 2.49% APR? Oh, well, everybody else had a Benz. So I needed to get the Tesla. I mean, I got to up, every, I gotta up everybody around me. And we got to ask ourselves these questions. I mean, to what degree do we covet this life? How much do we desire the luxuries of this life that we're going and willing to do things that are worse than adultery, that are worse than drinking, that are worse than drugs, and just so that we can live a certain type of lifestyle? That one, really, we don't have any excuses for. We just have to figure out ways to get out of that situation. The third one, which is very tricky but important to talk about, is student loans. This one is tricky because we've convinced ourselves that we have to get an education at a very, very specific time, conforming to the norms of the society that we live in. So we go and we enter into a certain institution. We might not have saved up enough money, and now we have to take out student loans to pay for the exorbitantly high prices of tuition in this society. We have to think twice about this. Right? And I'm saying this as somebody, like, I literally have my, part of my job is to advise people to get into college. We literally have an organization where we do college admissions, guidance, and whatnot. So I'm all about going to college, going to the best colleges. That's all true. We have to do that. But we have to think, what's the price tag that we're willing to pay? Right? Our people are taking fifty, hundred, two hundred thousand dollars in loans and for undergrad and then having to pay those back. Let alone somebody who wants to go to grad school, medical school, law school, uh, business school. Two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars of loans at four, five, six percent APR. And then we expect that money that we took was haram, but yet somehow the job that we're doing is halal. We gotta think about this. Right? And then there's business loans, credit card loans, and there are uh, uh, credit card uh, interest. There's so many different types of interest. But for the sake of time, we'll just cover those. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Okay, so it's starting to rain a lot. We're going to wrap it up really quickly, inshallah. But if anybody is not in the tent, if folks could try to kind of make some room to get those people who are outside of the tent, under the tent, that would be very nice, um, just so people don't get completely soaked. Alhamdulillah. We should still try to just socially distance. I'm not saying we get too close, but just try to make a little bit of room. Alhamdulillah. So now the question is, how do we get out of this problem that we're in? The first thing that we have to keep in mind is we have to realize how serious the problem actually is. We can't take this stuff lightly anymore, right? The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith, the halal is clear, the haram is clear, and so we know what things are very, very clear. The second thing we got to do is if we spent our time engaging in some type of interest, we got to at least recognize and we have to make toba from it. Just like we would make toba if we were drinking or if we were doing other haram things, we would. We got to make toba. We have to repent. Ya Allah, forgive me for engaging in this sin, but you very clearly describe what you don't like, but yet I engage in it. We have to clean and, and make toba and, and clean our intention. And then thirdly, we got to figure out a way to start getting out of this. Make the intention, Allah says in the Quran, from a yattaqillah, yaj'allahu makhraja. Whoever has taqwa of Allah, He gives them a way out. He will give them an exit strategy. So right now, whatever loans we have, and we've all been there, it's, it's, it's understandable, we all make mistakes, we're all in it, 
in some way, shape, or form, whether it's a mortgage or a car loan or a student loan, start to make dua and start to find a way out. Don't take this lightly. The last thing you want to do is meet Allah on the Day of Judgment and when something was very clearly warned against and just because we live in a society which takes it lightly, we started to take it lightly. Start to find a way out. If you have a mortgage, refinance to a prop, uh, an Islamic mortgage. It's not difficult. It's a, it doesn't cost anything more. It's very, very easy to do. It's a good time for us to do it. If we have a car loan, start paying it off quickly. Right? And from the future, make an intention. I'm not going to buy a car that I cannot afford to get either on lease or I can't afford to just buy all, uh, outright. If we have student loans, really seriously examine or if we're entering into that stage where our kids are going into college, start to think deeply about what are the different strategies I could have for either saving money, either waiting a year or two, going into community college because it's much more affordable, and then going into a proper institution, right? And then saving my money in order to, to be able to finance college. But definitely don't justify doing something haram just so you and I can live according to the timeline that this society has set. Allah doesn't have a timeline. He tells us to get an education. So just don't think, oh, education, then marriage, then this, then job. The typical American lifestyle dream type of approach just kind of let all that go and conform our approach to the Islamic view of I'm not going to do something haram no matter what impact it's going to have and I'm going to trust that Allah is going to give me a way out of it. He's going to give me better because I was trying to obey Him. It takes courage. Muslims, we need courage in this society. We have to stop being followers. We need to stop being leaders. The Prophet ﷺ was a leader. He didn't follow. He led. As Muslims in this society, we've got to start leading the way. For us, for other people, and then for the generations to come. And lastly, don't justify things that are, we're not ready for yet. Example, if we have aspirations, these are good aspirations to go to graduate school, medical school, MBA, whatever it is, right? And, but we know there's a major price tag associated with it. We can't pay it. There's very little justification one could give for saying I'm going to engage in $200,000 of loans that have interest associated with them so that I could go and become this profession. And then maybe my intention is to help people, but in Islam, the ends do not justify the means. The means must be halal and permissible, and the end must be halal and permissible. So we got to start to strategize and think of ways out. There's many, many, many ways we could do that. I'm not going to get into it for the sake of time, but at the very least, think use our brains to think, how can I find ways out of this situation? And how can I find ways out of this haram? And lastly, when we do have a major loan, but we also have savings accumulated, right? I know people who have car loans, but they got like fifty to $100,000 sitting in the bank. And yet they're still having a car loan because we're just in set it and forget it payment mode, right? Just even financially, not even Islamically, it doesn't make sense when you have money to be borrowing from somebody else. Borrow from yourself, and then pay yourself back the $500 a month in payments, but get rid of that interest loan. Do that for student loans. Do that for mortgages. Whatever we can to reduce the amount. If we can't eliminate it, reduce it. If someone can't quit drinking altogether, they should start by drinking less and less and less. Right? It doesn't mean that you either stop drinking altogether or you're an alcoholic. Same thing with us. It doesn't mean we have to leave it altogether if we can't. If we're not ready to, if we don't have the ability to, if we don't have the, 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 the strategy to. But it doesn't mean we just keep engaging in it. We have to start slowly coming up with ways. And lastly, we have to trust in Allah. This life is not the goal. All these desires, all these things we covet, all these financial instruments that we want, all this success that we want, if it's making us do things that aren't permissible, there's not going to be barakah in it. Just take some time to step back and examine what am I compromising in order to get this thing. And don't ever compromise your deen and don't ever compromise Allah and His Messenger. In Allah, our Malaika, to be salam, our Nabi, Ya Ayyuha Ladina Amanu, Salli wa Alayhi wa Sallim wa Tuslima, Allahumma Salli wa Sallim wa Barik ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala Alihi wa Sahbihi wa Sallim. Allahumma Salli Mu'minin wa Mu'minat, wa al Muslimin wa Muslimat, Ya Alham Rahmin, we ask you, we ask that you forgive us, Ya Allah, that you pardon us, Ya Allah, and that you remove all these sins and all these problems that we have, Ya Rabbil Alameen, all the things that we are doing that you don't find permissible. Give us an easy way out. Forgive us, Ya Rabbil Alameen, and pardon us for these sins that we have done, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And Ya Allah, give us the ability and inspire us to make toba and to change our lives before we die, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And let us die upon La ilaha illallah, Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Barakallah, Sayyidina Muhammad, and Wa Ali, Sahih Salim, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa Qim as